Our Good Friday scripture is from Mark chap uh, scripture one is from Mark chapter 15 verses 1 through 20. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again, Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, they handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. We will now sing the old rugged cross. Oh, first word, never mind. Oh, that's okay.
Our first reading is from Luke chapter 23. Two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. We will now sing the old rugged cross.
Our second reading is from Luke chapter 23. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Our next hymn is number 338. The third word is from John chapter 19. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. Our next song is O Sacred Head, Now Wounded, number 351.
Our next reading is from Matthew 27. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabbatini, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The next hymn is found in the bulletin. The fifth reading is from John chapter 19. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. Our next song is What Wondrous Love.
The sixth word is from John chapter 19. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop, held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Our next hymn is Were You There?
The seventh word is from Luke chapter 23. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, I take in, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. from Luke 23. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who through a member of the council had not agreed to their plan and action. He came from the Jewish town of Arithmia, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever been lain before. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how the body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath day they rested, according to the, cap to the commandment. What is so good about this day that we call Good Friday? How can we say it is good when the gospel readings we just heard tell us about the betrayal, the darkness, and Jesus' death? What is so good about commemorating a day of suffering and the death of Jesus? How can we say that is good. Maybe we should call this day Bad Friday or even Black Friday. In German, today is called Karfreitag or Sorrowful Friday. In English, in fact, the origin of the term good is debated and some believe it developed from an older name, God's Friday. These titles are more fitting as they clearly describe the dark and bleak events of this day. If you had spoken with Jesus' family and followers on that Friday long ago, I suspect they would say that it wasn't a good Friday. They stood there watching, weeping, and witnessing Jesus' suffering to them, that day, all hope seemed lost. Satan and his servants seemed to have won. Evil and death seemed to have triumphed. By his death, Jesus became the final and complete sacrifice for our sins. We cannot erase our guilt nor can we overcome our sins by our good deeds. Christ did what we could never do for ourselves, dying for us on that first Good Friday. Good Friday is good because as terrible as that day was, it had to happen for us to receive the joy of Easter. This day was part of God's plan to save us from our sins. The wrath of God against sin had to be poured out on Jesus, the perfect sacrificial substitute, in order for forgiveness and salvation to be poured out to the world. That is what makes today a good Friday.
Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you willed that your Son should bear for us the pain of the cross, that you might remove us from the power of the adversary. Help us to remember and give thanks for our Lord's passion, that we may obtain remission of sin and redemption from everlasting death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our last hymn is hymn 356, verses 1, 3, 4, and 7. <clears throat> 